Um, Don with Christian Transportation, Brian Brzezowski with BCB Transport. Gentlemen, first of all, thank you for joining us here at BCB Live. You know, a lot of people here watching this show. Don, I'm going to go to you first because that's where the truckers truck. Tell me, how did you get that name? Uh, well, um, being a fourth generation trucker and uh, having pretty high hiring standards for a long time, looking for something that we could uh, use for a motto. Uh, Barry McGowan, my safety director, after uh, winning several of the TCA safety awards in a row, come up with that, and we registered, trademarked it early uh, on. Uh, so uh, we're the truckers truck. I yeah. <laughs> we, I love that thing. Yeah, I love it. We love it too. We've now branded it on all of our trailers. And, well, I've been on trailers forever, but now you'll see it on all of our trucks as well. Awesome. And, and Brian Brzezowski, Be Safe, Communicate, Be On Time. Talk to us when a little bit can. about that. We can. So, uh, Be Safe, we knew that me and my business partner, Sir Rick, or Rick Larkin, I guess you should call it, <laughs> uh, we always felt like that. You know, we, we knew what we were doing trucking-wise, but we said if anything could shut us down, Don, we said safety would be the first thing that we, we, we had to protect. So that was the first thing that we, we ever thought about was being safe while we're trucking. And, uh, and everything that goes along with it, that pirouettes behind being safe. So that's the first thing we did, be safe, communicate. Everybody wants, to, everybody wants communication, whether it's driver to us, back to the driver, or back to the customer. We all want communication. And being on time used to was be on time. It's be on time when you can now because just it's a different day and time. Yeah. yeah so, you, so you bring up something, and I want to talk about that because we're big on streaks here at BCB Live. Talk to us about you have a streak, and you have a big streak as well. Talk to us, Don, about your safety streak right now at Christensen. So we just passed a little over 20 million miles two weeks ago without awesome. a preventable accident. Uh, so uh, that, those are accidents that aren't charged to us as a motor carrier. Uh, we're coming up on uh, December 15th. If we hit that day, it'll be one year and Ooh. however many miles without having a chargeable accident, accident. So we're pretty excited about that. We just passed 10 million miles with no DOT recordables wow. of any kind. Awesome, So man. Uh, real excited about those two streaks. Big Blue, you guys have a streak of your own. It's called the backing, the guilt, get it's, out and look streak. I think it's a 79, or where are we at? 70 what? Just say it, producer. There you go. <laughs> Well, I'm betting on we're going to get five more days out of it. I'm just letting you know. He had a know. premonition. He had a <laughs> premonition. premonition. We're going to be at 79 here pretty soon. But, yes, that's unbelievable. Don, we were um, had about 2.65 or 2.75 backing accidents per week. And now we are at 74 days without one. So you start talking about it. Our driver's doing the unbelievable job. And we even count when we get backed into it as part of that streak. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's great. It's a great streak for us right now. So safety, obviously, it's a big portion of what we do. We also, you know, and in, in especially what y'all do there, safety is important because, and, and we're kind of going to get off script here, but I do like this because if you don't watch your safety, you know what, your premiums are going to go skyrocket. You, you know, the, op, the odds of, uh, of, of having an accident and then losing in court, just again, that culture. What are you all doing to, to make culture around safety for your company? Well, for us, we've got another motto that says safety takes priority. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's on everybody's signature in their emails. And we actually went around and trained every single department and how they could infect safety out on the highway. I'll give you a brief example. Thursday uh, are the days that we do our prelim pay payments to the drivers. Mm -hmm. So they're getting settlements. There's a little anxiety there. Uh, we, we trained our um, settlement clerk that when you hit no on the button, when you see it ring, he can call back later, he can call back later. But that creates additional anxiety mm. among that driver where if you just pick up the phone and talk through uh, things with them, then, then it, they're going to have a chance to bring their anxiety level down. And, and so, you know, that's just one example, but we went to every department and we talked about what safety means in their department for trucks out on the highway. Brian? So we do a show. We also, uh, so it's, it's to us, it's like a, um, 
you know, you have a quarterly meeting, Don. So we have that meeting every day. And then <clears throat> interactive with the drivers. And also we, uh, we, we bonus for safety as well. Um, so it, it keeps everybody active, through, you know, through that. So that's a lot of things that we do on that side, on the safety side. Gotcha. So, so we're going to talk that, and we're going to lead this into driver shortage, right? We hear the ATA saying 80,000 drivers short from our industry right now. Um, when we, we hear the president as well, and, and produce, if you can, go ahead and, and play that clip real quick. This is across the board commitment to going to 24-7. This is a big first step in speeding up the movement of materials and goods through our supply chain. Say so supply chain. It's the it's the front page of everything. It's all we hear supply chain, supply chain, supply chain, supply chain. What's going on in our industry? I'll let either one of you start with that. Why can't why are why are the uh, the why can't I get my noodles at Thanksgiving? That's all I need some elbow noodles. Why can't we get that? Why aren't there any cars? What is happening in, in this industry today? Well, first I want to defend the truckers just a little bit because I think they've gotten most of the black <laughs> eye on this deal. Uh, you, know, you even had uh, President Biden say the truckers just need to work more. Well, mm. we're regulated on the amount of hours we can work. It would be nice if we could pick up two more hours a day of driving time and get the shippers to, you know, load us quicker, unload us quicker. We we typically spend uh, two to four hours a day uh, that we could use driving, just loading and unloading live right. loads. So that they want to call it free time, right? Free time, yeah. right? That's free well, time. Be, the drivers who, don't who get works paid. for free anyway. We don't well, get I mean, paid. I don't, right. I don't know. So, 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 so here we go right free. here. So, so let me just do that. So we so we have a driver shortage right now, and in in, in eighty thousand. And so, Don, how do you sell, and Brian, how do you sell a driver to come work where they can come work for free? That's a hard thing yeah, to you, do, you right? You can't so, do that so, anymore. You don't so, talk about it. I mean, right. it's, cause it's, <laughs> you don't, I mean, who wants to work for free? I, yeah. Nobody in this building wants to work right. for free. I can promise you that. You give me somebody at McDonald's that goes in, and, and they're getting paid 20 bucks an hour, right? Well, hey, guess what? You make that coffee. Oh, by the way. The first two hours are free, Don. Or the first hour and the last hour. <laughs> yeah, so you, you pick it. Which one? How would you? How would you like that? Yeah, no, they're not going to do that. And so, so, with with all that happens, it means we have shortage here. We, we we struggle getting drivers in this thing. And now we have that new four letter word that's floating around here, and it's inflation. And it's it's such a bad four letter word that it's like nine letters now. It's not even four letters anymore. Inflation and. And Don and Brian, when we think about inflation, we think about the cost of goods going up. And is that when is that coming down? I mean, are, are, first of all, why do we have inflation? I mean, are your costs really going up? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it started with the chip shortage, and they were going to have record build years for uh, trucks and trailers this year. Production's down. 35 to 40 percent because they can't get the parts to build the trucks. There's, they were sold out for all of this year. Uh, I buy pack car product. I buy a lot of Peterbilts. They have pushed anywhere from 10 to 15,000 trucks out into next year. Well, next year was going to be a record build year. So they're not going to be able to build those trucks. Uh, they've they went from building 175 a day down to 135 a day mm. just for in, um, part shortages. Well, it's supply and demand. You know, you've got people that are coming back, and, and it's not the OEM saying, hey, we're going to charge you more. It's the buyer saying, I'll pay more if you put me at the front of the line. Then you have allocation, right? And I think Don's kind of talking about that, that some of these dealerships now are allocated. They may have had... 1,200 trucks sold first quarter, but they're only allocated a certain amount of trucks. Brian, oh. have you heard anything from any of the vendors? Oh, 100%. So it, in, in the future, they would have had, they could sell 12,000 trucks during that time frame. And, and we bought some Kenworths, and, you know, we're heavy on the Volvo side. And um, so here it is. Now they're coming back to you and said, hey, we only have 1,000 build slots. So we're not going to be on the Q Q1. So we're not going to be able to allocate that. We're going to have to spread you out for Q1, Q2, and Q3 to get your the amount of trucks that you have ordered. Yeah. So the stuff that you were banking on to fill seats, to replenish um, old equipment that you have in your fleet, now you're not, you don't have that. And now you're dealing with older equipment, 
and you're dealing with parts issues now. And driving so, your maintenance cost up. It, it, 100%. So something breaks down. Now, it's a, okay, well, one box in a Freightliner. Have you heard about this, yep. Don? National back order. Yep. We've had two go down, Don, and it's taken, I want to say, somewhere around 60 days to get them trucks back in. What do you do? Right. I mean, what do you tell the... What do you tell the owner operator? He can't. There's no way. We no nobody can sustain sixty days being in the shop. Right. I mean, there's there's nothing you can do about it. And here it is now. They're starting to allocate trailers. Um, which trailers? We bought trailers. They've went up fifty percent. Yeah. Fifty percent mm-hmm. on our trucks. We're about the same as you, Don. We're we're somewhere around that sixteen to seventeen percent raising right. uh, raising cost, and it's unbelievable. And and now people talk to us about supply chain and why is the cost going up so much. Well, hey, here you go. Here's right. the reason why, because we can't get parts. We can't get fixed. We can't get back on the road. We have to pay our drivers, and, and they deserve to be paid right. 100%. Downtime at your shipper and receiver. Exactly. Everybody wants to have that elbow macaroni at $2, well, it's 3 now. Right. And so what about this? So we, so we have the delays in here. What about the parking? You know, we talk about the infrastructure bill. We've talked about it here plenty of times. Nowhere in the infrastructure bill does it address truck parking. Or do you, is that even an issue, or is that just something that, that we make up in, on, on, on what we do? Is truck parking an issue at, at gas stations, at fuel islands, at um, rest areas? Is there plenty of parking, or is there really an issue? It's a real issue. Now, if you count total trucks parking spaces across the entire United States, they'll tell you we don't have a truck parking issue. Because you can go to certain places out west where the population isn't as dense as it is yeah. east and in other major metropolitan areas, and there's plenty of parking. So, you know, typical government, that's what they do. They count every parking space yes. and say, oh, there's enough parking for the trucks on the road. But when you're running the I-81 corridor where the third of the populations within 500 miles of each other between Boston and mm-hmm. Philadelphia, and you stretch that out a little bit down that eastern seaboard to Miami, uh, there's not enough truck parking. And we've got really strict laws. Where these drivers are on a shot clock when they start every morning. They, You start out your day, and it's just like any other event. You're on a shot clock, and when you start getting down towards the end of your time, yes, sir. That's when drivers get anxious. That's when they make mistakes. That's when they start looking for places to park that aren't safe. And that's why we see trucks on on ramps and off ramps, uh, even at rest areas. The rest areas are completely full and they're still lining up the on ramps and off ramps. What I would say is you go to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and you see if there's a parking issue. Right. That's the corridor to the northeast. That's a corridor going west. That is a corridor going south. You tell me if there's a parking issue, and, and, and I talk about a main hub on that 81, on where all the population's at. You tell me if there's not a parking issue. It's it's horrible. It's, yeah, yeah. And, and let's talk Dallas for a second. You both do a lot of business inside the Dallas area. Dallas, top four, top five shipper if you take the metropolitan in the country. Where are you parking in Dallas? I'm just curious. Well, God forbid you park down at the Flying J and Hutchins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you right. get, then yeah, you the get robbed. The only you're allowed right. to park yeah. where you're not supposed to park. Right. Yeah. Where do you park in DFW? There is no parking inside this Metroplex. You're typically parking at your shippers out on their street in industrial parks where you have no facilities. Thank you. So the drivers are you know, having to try to handle that on their own inside the cab of the truck. And these trucks are really nice, but they don't come with bathrooms. You know, they'll have refrigerators, microwaves, TVs, and a lot of other amenities, yep. but they don't have bathrooms. Yeah, I'd like to see what the, the, the see, this is the, this is the real workforce right here. I'd like to see what everybody else does, because the one thing I do right when I wake up, I used to restaurant. Right. And, you've, and, and now they're having to go, to, they're having to sleep at a shipper or a receiver, and what do you think, and then, oh, by the way, there's one bathroom, and it's this freaking big, and there's and it's horrible. It's trashed out, and they won't expect the driver to be on time. Oh, by the way, you're 15 minutes late. Hey, you're going to have to wait a little bit. You weren't, you didn't check in in time. Well, I was using the restroom. Hey, there was a line that you had out the door mm-hmm. using the restroom. What am I supposed to do? Right. And, and they want us to— it happens every day. Yeah, oh, exactly. Let's talk a little bit about our famous, uh, a, a great subject, and that's the vaccine mandate. Let's hop into that. We have a few minutes left. 
So we have a stay on that, right? We're, we, it's up in the Sixth Circuit, up in Cincinnati, as they continue to look at that. The supply chain's a mess right now. I mean, if we went through a vaccine mandate, and both of you are large shippers or large or large uh, customers or, or pe- employers with greater than 100 people, how is that going to affect your job in trucking? It's going to make it difficult. We, we surveyed our drivers about three months ago, and we're at 40% vaccinated. Uh, we're going back to survey to now ask, um, if the mandate is put into effect, would you get vaccinated or what steps would you be willing to take to stay employed so that we can kind of understand our uh, in-walls employees are about 70% vaccinated, but and we're starting that same process of communicating, of trying to find out where they stand on it. And, and what I'm afraid is the people that aren't vaccinated have chosen to not be for a reason. And I think it's gonna be difficult to say, it's your job or vaccination. So we've taken the stance, we're gonna work around it. Well, I mean, we're gonna comply with the rules, but at Christensen Transportation, we're gonna make sure nobody has to pick their job between vaccination and non-vaccination. Right. I would like, you know, and I'm gonna mirror that, Don, too. The, the other reason I got vaccinated is because I had to go see customers. And, and they, the, I mean, they were like saying, hey, he, he called, Houston, I'm headed to Houston in, in like in, in a month. He goes, are you vaccinated? I'm like, no. He's like, you got to be if you're coming down. So I, I, I put together, within three weeks, I got both shots. And, you know, and I, I guess I would say I am pro-vaccination. Um, I, I think we should. I think it does work. I think there's a reason for it. And if you don't want to, I'm not mad about it. It's, it's your body. I, I fully agree to that. But it also has curved the problem. We, we all, I think we can all agree to that. Now, is, did they come up with a, a vaccination? Um, I, you know, I saw an article the other day. Okay. They came up with a, vaccine, a, a vaccination for COVID within 10 months, something like that. And how have they not got a vaccination for cancer or something like right, that. Right. I mean, is, is cancer that much stronger than, I mean, COVID, and it probably is. And um, But that, I'm just a little curious. But they've been working on that for, for 40 years. Yeah, 40 years. <laughs> but then AIDS, if you look at AIDS in that same article, it's right. AIDS. So right. Some of the fear that we hear, and, and the producer can, can attest to some of this, when we hear the drivers, you know, calling for different companies, is, is they say, well, number one, it's my right. Right. right, it's my right number. I don't trust it yet because it's only been ten months. And, you know, where is all the testing at? And and you know, if you believe in it, or you know, it guess depends what side you're on. Well, that's all the test you need. And and some folks just say, no, it's not. I mean, I, it's I only been a year today. I mean, it hasn't been that long. And and, and if um, that's your argument, I have no problem with it. Yeah, I, I can I can agree with that. But I'm again with Don. We're gonna we're gonna mirror that side too, where we're gonna, you know. Test available. We'll figure it out because you know what, good employees are worth fighting for. Yep. And, yes, sir. And you know what, we built this company with good employees. We built it with great drivers, and we're and we're going to continue on that. If it, you know, you want to keep your right, one hundred percent. But you know, um, it's a difficult situation, and we'll get through it. So yep. let me ask this. Let me ask it this way as well. What makes it? Uh, why you? Because you have a hundred or greater. As opposed to those that don't have it. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. I want your opinions on that. Why treat you different than somebody who has less employees than you do? So here's the crazy part of it, right? I've got 100 employees counting my in-walls employees that are at three different terminals. I don't have 100 Mm -hmm. in any one terminal. And I've got about 100 company truck drivers. And i got 100 independent contractors. The independent contractors, they're not required. They're going to mix in with all the same people, but they're not required. But the company truck drivers and all the in-walls employees, they're going to be required to take a vaccination. So I I don't know why and or how they even come up with the rules to vet that out. It's, you know, um, Where, I think the, the most 100? we have in any one office is 35 people. And so we're spread out. In Nashville, Lebanon, Tennessee, Chesterfield, Missouri, and Stratford, Missouri. 
Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, because, and, and yeah, where did the 100 come from? They just say a lot of, it's just, a, it was a number, right? That was just yeah. felt right. That was the feel right number. And, and what makes it, and Brian, to you, what makes it more fair or how, I mean, is it safe to say that if you have 25 employees that they're, you're not going to get it? I mean, isn't it fair, one, right for one, right for all? Oh, it's yeah. crazy. It should be, 100%. <laughs> and I don't care if you have 10. So, again, we're just like Don, um, Oklahoma City, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, uh, Denver, Colorado, Mansfield, Texas. We don't have a hundred in all in one location. We don't. Right. It, so, so why do we have to? Why does that mandate fit us? And, and then on your drivers, they're not domicile here. They're not in here every day. On your long haul drivers, even your regional drivers, they don't come in. Everything's done. We we we're computerized. We we put everything in. Um, we, there's no transload. There's no dropping off your bills anymore when you come by. Every once in a while, drop them off. You want to come by and grab and say hi? Cool, 100%. We want to see you. We have showers here. But how, how does that fit in? And then if there if they're 10 employees, it's just the same as 100. Yeah. There is a lot of talk that the single driver, because he does mm -hmm. a lot of single work, almost like a work-from-home yeah. employee would, and that the, when he's not doing that, he's outside. Uh, that more than likely he'll get an exemption, yep. um, but, how, but he'll have to wear a mask when he goes your, in. And how does your work from home employees count towards your one hundred? Yeah, that uh, that puts you over the one hundred status. Yeah, that's amazing to me. Right. So okay, they never come in. They work from home and they count towards your one hundred. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or your drivers count towards your one hundred, which they they work in a truck. They go home. They yeah. don't come mm -hmm. to our. They're not here domicile at our office. How does that count towards your 100? It's typical. Oh, okay, or, you're, or you have three people in Oklahoma City. <laughs> and right, that counts towards your 100. We have lots to talk about. We still have more of BCB Live, and I think we're going to have to have a part two because I think we have a lot to talk about. I love the insight from both of you on our industry, right, on what you do. I appreciate all the safe miles that you all do. And, and the safety that you do and, and you encourage to your, not just to your drivers, but to your employees, right? On the culture of safety. This is BCB Live. We have Buckle Up Bob coming up next. We are the safest station in the nation.